بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفه وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء ونعوذ منك برحمتك يا رحمة الرحمة الحمد لله بيعرف توفيق to continue with حلقة الثانية according to this edition is lesson 15 we continue linguistic text and references and today inshallah we talk about الاطلاق uh, we had it in previous books on Usul, Al-Itlaq, Mutlaq and Muqayyad, and then Am and Khas, and so on and so forth. Al-Itlaq, as you know, is opposite to Taqyid. Sometimes we have a concept as, for example, subject for the ruling, for Hawk, in its general way, without any limit. For example, we say Alma, Al Insan, Al Kitab. Yes. So there is no modifier. But sometimes we bring a modifier. For example, we say Atiq Rakabatan or sometimes we may say Atiq Rakabatan Mu'minatan. Yeah? Or for example, Akram Aleman or Akram Mathalan Aleman Muttaqiyam. So if something is meant to be general and tabi'at, the nature of it, it's meant, this is mutlaq. If it is a special portion of that or type of that, a hissa, like particular group of ulama, particular, for example, group of slaves, particular water, then this is muqayyad. Okay, so mutlaq and muqayyad means this. The question is whether terms which indicate these general notions are designated for mutlaq or even etlaq and taqid are not part of the meaning. Salam. Uh, I don't want to go into this discussion because Ayatollah Saab has not mentioned this here, but you are familiar and in Usul also we talked about it. Sometimes etlaq is taken and it become, becomes la bisharte qismi. But sometimes even that is not taken because la bishart maqsami, which is general, can be found in la bishart, bishart shay, bishart la. So alma or raqaba or alim, is it for mutlaq so that if it is used for muqayyad, it becomes majaz? Or it is not for mutlaq, it can be. Mutlaq, it can be mugayya. So it means it is more general. If it is used in mugayya, it needs an extra indicator. Like raqabatan mu'minatan. Mu'mina shows that there is a condition. We call it min bab ta'addud dal wal madlul. Means you have two indicators and two indications. If there is no extra indicator, the word does not indicate its love because the word is general. We understand it from muqaddamatul hikmah. As you remember, we said, whenever a term is used and the speaker didn't limit it to certain type, and he was in the context of explaining himself, 
في مقام البيان he was able to make all the necessary details he wanted to speak to us but he didn't say anything specific so this means that he meant it to be general he meant it to be mutlaq yeah this is muqaddamatu like when we had this before so some people like majority of our ulama today they say that Itlaq is understood from Muqaddamatul Hikmah. Not that the term is designated for Mutlaq. And if you use it for Muqayyad, it becomes Majas. The term in itself is silent about this. If a Qaid is mentioned, okay, so we will understand it, Muqayyad. If Qaid is not mentioned, by using some intellectual argument, which is Muqaddamatul Hikmah, we say, so Mutlaq must be meant. Please look at the text. Al-Itlaq yuqabilu taqyid. Itlaq is opposite to taqyid. Fa'in tasawwarta ma'nan. وَلَا هَسْتَ فِيهِ وَسْوًا خَاصًا أَوْ حَالَةً مُعَيَّنَةً If you conceive a meaning and consider in that meaning a particular attribute or particular condition وَسْوًا means attribute خَاصًا Particular, a specific. Hala means condition. Mu'ayyana means a specific, particular. So, if you conceive a meaning and consider in it a particular attribute, kana dhalika taqiyidan. This is called taqiyid. Wa in tasawwartahu bidun an talhaza ma'ahu ayya vasman aw halatin ukhra. But if you conceive it without considering with it any attribute or any condition, nothing else, kana zalika itlaqan. This is called itlaq. So, at taqyidu idhan huwa lihaadu khususiyyatin za'idatin fit tabi'a. Taqyid means that we consider Additional particularity in tabia, in the nature of that concept, like insan, like ma, whatever. Wal itlaq adamu lihaz al khususiyat al zahida. Itlaq means you don't consider anything additional, just the general meaning. Wa tabiatu mahfuzatun fi kelta al halatay. Whether it is mutlaq or mugayyat, tabi'ah is there. Yeah, mahfuza means preserved, means in both cases. Whether you say raqabatan mu'mina or raqabatan, the meaning of raqaba is there. Yeah? Whether you say alim, for example, muttaqi or alim. Alim is there. It's a matter of alim mutlaqan or alim muqayyadan, but alim is there. So, at tabi'atu. محفوظة في كلتا الحالتين. طبيعة is preserved in both conditions. غير أنها تتميز في الحالة الأولى بأمر وجودي وهو لهذا الخصوصية. The only thing is that in the first condition the طبيعة is distinguished by existential thing and that is considering a kind of particularity so you say it has to be mu'mina it has to be muttaqi but in the case of itla it is distinguished the amran adami with a negational thing what is that negational thing Adamu lihaz al That nothing particular is meant. 
nothing, nothing particular is demanded. So, as I said, etlaq is not something that you bring a lapse for it, a term for it. Yeah? The fact that you didn't bring something to show taqyid, it's enough to understand etlaq. Okay? وَمِنْ هُنَا يَقَعُ الْبَحْثِ From now, from this point, a discussion emerges. فِي أَنَّ كَلِمَةَ إِنْسَانِ مَثَلًا Any tabi'ah, like insan. Or أي كلمة مشابه Anything like that. Alim, water, a slave, anything that indicates a general meaning. هل هي موضوعة للطبيعة المحفوظة في كلتا الحالتين؟ Is it designated for that general quiddity, general nature, general mahiyya, which is preserved in both conditions, means in اطلاق المغيّر؟ فلا التغييد دخيل في المعنى الموضوع له ولا لإطلاق؟ Neither taghid is taken as a condition, as a part of the meaning for which this is designated, nor itlaq. بل الكلمة بمدلولها This insan or anything like that, by its meaning, تلائم كل الأمرين suits both itlaq and taghid. Insan doesn't mean insan مقيد and also doesn't mean insan mutlaq with etlaq being a condition. Because if mutlaq was a condition, then when you use it for qayr mutlaq, it becomes majaz. Insan is insan, neither mutlaq nor muqayyad. You can add something to this to make it muqayyad, you can leave it and it automatically becomes mutlaq. When you don't mention qayr, it becomes mutlaq. But its love is not part of the meaning. Insan doesn't mean insan mutlaq. Insan means insan. Is it clear? Al kalimatu bimadluleha tula imukil al amrain. This word with its meaning suits both. Etlaq and taqid. Amrain means etlaq and taqid. So, this is one idea which is correct. Another idea is to say anna al-kalimata mawzu'atun lit-tabi'at al-mutlaqah to say that insan and anything like insan is designated for the nature, for the general concept but with the condition that it has to be mutlaq. فَتَدُلُّ الْكَلِمَةُ بِالْوَذْعِ عَلَى الْإِطْلَاقِ Then, by designation, it indicates itlaq. Itlaq becomes part of the meaning. Okay? Itlaq وَعَدَمُ الْحَازِ الْقَيْدِ becomes part of the meaning. So, these are two opinions. وَقَدْ وَقَعَ الْخِلَافِ فِي ذَلِكِ there has been controversy about this. Either you say etlaq and taqid, both of them are outside the meaning and outside the meaning, or to say etlaq is part of the meaning for which it has been designated. These are two opinions. Now, Ayatollah Saad mentions two consequences for this debate. The first is if we accept its love to be part of ma'na al then when, you, when we use it for muqayyat it becomes what? Majaz. Because you will have to leave aside part of the meaning. Whenever you leave aside part of the meaning or add to the meaning it becomes majaz. Okay? So if insan means insan mutlaq and you use it for muqayyad, it becomes majas. 
But if insan means insan, neither mutlaq nor muqayyad, then you can use it for muqayyad with additional evidence, or you can leave it and it becomes mutlaq. But through muqaddamat al Not that it is designated for mutlaq. You understand? Pardon? Yes. Yes. Yataratabu alahad al khilaf amran. Two things are following this controversy. Like two consequences. One. In استعمال اللفظ وإرادة المقيد على طريقة تعدد الدال والمدلول يكون استعمالا حقيقيا على الوجه الأول To use the term and mean by that المقيد if you say insan and you mean particular type of insan. But in the way that you bring two indicators for two meanings. Yeah? So you say al insan alim, for example. Insan means something, alim means something, additional, but each of them has its own meaning. This is not a problem. According to which opinion? According to the opinion of those people that they say etlag is not part of the meaning of insan. But according to those who say etlag is part of the meaning of insan, if I say insan alem means I had to cut part of the meaning of insan which was etlag and leave it aside and use it for this means then majas. Yeah, according to this view, becomes majas. Because you are using it fi qayr ma ghusa Allah. In istimal al-lafz wa iradat al-muqayyad ala tariqat ta'addud al-dal wal madlul yakun istimalan haqiqiyan ala al-wajh al-awwal. To use the term and mean by it muqayyad but in the way of ta'addud al wal madlul means you have more than one indicator and more than one meaning. According to the first opinion becomes haqiqi. It's not metaphoric. It's real. لَأَنَّ الْمَعْنَ الْحَقِيقِي لِلْكَلِمَةِ مَحْفُوظٌ فِي زَمْنِ الْمُقَيَّدِ وَالْمُطْلَقِ عَلَى السَّوَى Because the real meaning, the true meaning of the term, like insan, is there in both conditions, whether it is muqayyad or mutla, equally. But, according to the second opinion, وَيَكُونُ مَجَازًا عَلَى الْوَجْهِ الثَّانِي Becomes majaz. Why it becomes majaz? Because you are taking away part of the meaning. Because according to the second opinion, the meaning was الْإِنسَانُ الْمُطْلَقِ and now you are using it for insan muqayyad so you are taking mutlaq outside it's because majaz la'anna al-kalima lam tustamal fi al-mutlaq ma'annaha mawdu'atun lil-mutlaq ay lit-tabi'ati allati lam yulhaz ma'aha qayd bi hasab al-fa'l so it is according to second opinion designated for mutlaq means tabia without qaid now you are using it with qaid becomes majaz you have not preserved al ma'na al mawdu'ah okay for example if something is designated for example ice ice means cold frozen water if i use ice in water only not frozen water is it majaz or not? Because frozen is part of the meaning, you have removed it. According to those who say etlag is part of the meaning, when you use it in muqayyad, you have left aside part of the meaning, it becomes majaz. Like using 
ice in liquid water. It's not just although it's water, but ice was water with something extra that you have left it aside. It becomes majas. The second thing, the second consequence, can you guess what is the second uh, consequence of this debate? If you say it's long is part of the meaning, then how do you understand muqayyad and mutlaq? Both of them from lafs. Muqayyad from lafs, mutlaq also from lafs. Mutlaq when tabia is mentioned without qayd, muqayyad when tabia is mentioned with qayd, but both of them understood from lafs, from the term. But according to the opinion that we prefer, mutlaq is not understood from lafs only. Because lafs is silent about etlaq. Mughayyad is used and understood through lafs. Mutlaq needs something outside, another reason, and that is muqaddimatul. We need some intellectual argument. We need a support, a kind of supplementary. And that is to say, when something is mentioned without Qaid, and the speaker wants to tell us what he wants, and he is able, there is no taqiyya, there is no hurry. He wants something from us, he can mention the details, and he's serious, but he doesn't mention any qayt. Aql says so, perhaps he doesn't mean any qayt. Yes? Because he's Hakim. If he wanted something particular, why he didn't mention? If he told me just atir ragabatan, and he was able to say extra thing, but he didn't say anything extra as condition. He just said ragaba. Or for example, he tells me bring water. He doesn't say cold, he doesn't say hot, he doesn't say, you know, sweet. He just says, bring me water. He's able to mention details. And he is serious. It's fi maram al-bayan. But still he hasn't mentioned. So, Oqala say, you can assume that he meant mutla. But how did you understand this atlaq? From laughs? No. Laughs is silent. Father? You understood it by using your Aql, that Aql says because Muqayyad is not mentioned, and if he had wanted, he could have mentioned, so it means he didn't want it. Yeah? Al-Amr al-Akhar Inna al-Kalimah Iza waqa'at fi dalil hukmin Kama iza ukhizat mawzu'an lil hukm mathalan ولم نعلم أن الحكمة هل هو ثابت لمدلول الكلمة على الإطلاق أو لحصة مقيدة من When a word has occurred in the reason for a ruling, in the reference for a ruling, for example, it is taken as موزو, as a subject for a ruling, and we don't know whether the ruling is for the meaning of that kalima in general or for a specific portion of it. Based on the second view, which says etlag is part of the meaning. If etlag is part of the meaning of the term, so we can argue from from designational indication means from the term for etlaq. Why? Because etlaq لأنه مأخوذ في المعنى في المعنى الموجودة. Because it is taken as part of the meaning for which it is designated, and it is a guide for that. فيكون من القيود التي ذكرها المتكلم. So it becomes one of the things that متكلم has mentioned. Guide can be a Quality, great can be etlaq. 
الانسان بقید الاطلاق if this was the meaning so you understand it from the term فنطبق عليه قاعدة احترازية القيود so if اطلاق is part of the meaning then we apply the rule that we had last session قاعدة احترازية القيود we said we have this rule among orf and common sense that whenever someone mentions a قيد this قيد must be meant in دلالت تصدقية why you added this قيد you must have meant it you cannot say I just play with the words or you know I just say it by accident the first assumption is if instead of leaving it general you mention it with a specific attribute or condition you mean that yeah so نطبق عليه قاعدة احترازية القيود فثبت أن المراد الجدي مطلق so what was meant was also mutlaq but this is according to the people who take itlaq as part of the meaning اما على الوجه الاول but if we say itlaq is not part of the meaning فلا دلالة وزئية للفظ على ذلك we don't have دلالة وزئية for the laughs for the term about itlaq اطلاق is not understood from لفظ why? لأن اللفظ موضوع بموجبه للطبيعة المحفوظة because لفظ is designated for the general notion which is available in both مطلق and مقيد and both اطلاق and تغييد are outside the meaning for which it is designated كل من الاطلاق والتغييد خارج عن المدعول الوضعي لللفظ both of them are part of neither تغييد is included in the meaning of insan nor اطلاق is included in the meaning of insan فالمتكلم لم يذكر في كلامه التغييد ولا الاطلاق a speaker when he says insan he has not mentioned تغييد nor اطلاق ولا يمكن بالطريقة السابقة and نثبت الاطلاق according to this opinion we cannot prove اطلاق like the previous one from the term بل لابد من طريقة اخرى we need to follow another path والصحيح هو الوجه الاول and the first is correct meaning that the term is used in general not for general It, yeah, generality or non-generality are not conditions. As-sayyuhu wal-wajhul awwal. Le-anna al-vijdan al-urfi shahidun be-anna isti'mal al-kalima fil-muqayyad ala tariqat al-dal wal-madlu laysa fiha tajawuz. Because what we understand and we feel through our common sense is that when a word is used for muqayyad according to multiplicity of indicators and indications this is not majaz, this is not metaphoric if I say raqabatan mu'mina, this is not majaz but if raqaba meant mutlaq and now I am using for muqayyad, it becomes majaz wa ala haza al-asas, on this basis نحتاج في إثبات الإطلاق إلى طريقة أخرى. If we choose this view and we say إطلاق is not part of the meaning, so to establish إطلاق we need another way. You cannot use لفظ. Okay? إذ ما دام الإطلاق غير مأخوذ في مدلول اللفظ بضعا فهو غير مذكور في الكلام. Because As long as itlaq is not taken as meaning of the term, the meaning for which it has been designated, so itlaq is not mentioned. فَلَا يُتَاحُ تَتْبِيقُ قَاعِدَةِ احْتِرَازِيَةِ الْقُيُودِ عَلَيْهِ We cannot apply that rule that we studied last session. 
for uh, to this. Ihtiraziyatul Qayyud is when a speaker brings a Qayd, he should mean it. If he says, bring me cold water, you cannot say he said cold as example. That needs extra evidence. Orf says, if he says, bring me cold water, to be cold is important. It is for ihtaraz, means I don't want water which is not cold. Okay? okay? But can we say this rule applies here? No. Because insan doesn't mean insan mutlaq. So you cannot say mutlaq is qaid and qaid is for ihtaraz, is to exclude other types. No. There is no qaid here. So we need, according to the view that Ayatollah Saab and our ulama normally prefer, we need to establish etlaq by a rational, intellectual point or consideration, not by laughs. Laughs is silent about etlaq. You need muqaddamatul hikma. So here then there is a discussion about qarinatul hikma. Let me see how much. So, Muqaddamat Hikmah doesn't apply. Yes. So, if, for example, the speaker was observing Taqiyya, so he was not able to speak all the details, so here you cannot say he meant mutla. It becomes ambiguous. And then you have to do ihtiyat, for example. But if he was able to say and he wanted us to practice, it was waqtul amal, it was the time to practice, and he was uh, supposed to tell everything that we need to know, but he didn't say, so it means that he's happy. Yeah? Like, you know, the a story of the cow of Bani Israel. If they had studied al Mosul or <laughs> were <laughs> acting rationally, they didn't need to ask so many questions, because if Allah wanted those conditions as conditions, He would have mentioned to them. Yeah? God asked you to slaughter a cow. And He didn't mention any details. So it was enough. But then they kept asking questions in order to maybe delaying or hoping that no answer would come, and they can say, we ask a question, you didn't give answer. So they made it more difficult. If you are not tired, maybe we can go for five, ten minutes to finish Muqaddamat al-Hikmah. But the objection, we leave it for another time. Qarinatul Hikmah. The evidence of Hikmah, wisdom. We use wisdom of the speaker as a kind of evidence that if the speaker wants to, to say something which is muqayyad and he can mention it, so he must mention, he wants muqayyad and he can't mention the details and he doesn't say, so he didn't want it. Because Hakim doesn't do something against his purpose. Hakim acts according to the purpose. Yeah? If you want Mughayyad, you have to tell Mughayyad. If you don't want Mughayyad, okay, don't say it. But if you want it, you have to say it. At tariqatul ukhra, so the second tariqa, it's not based on laughs, is ma yusammiha al muhaqqun al mutaakhirun. Muhaqqun means those scholars who have very great research and understanding, and these are mutaakhir means recent generations. They call it Qarinatul Hikmah or Muqaddamatul Hikmah. its substance is this. At tamasuk bidalalatin tasawuri tasdiqiyatin 
لظهور عرفي سياقي آخر غير ذلك الظهور الحالي السياقي الذي تعتمد عليه قاعدة احترازية القيود They appeal to a kind of دلالت تصديقية but different from احترازية القيود The whole thing is one point If you understand this point the text becomes easy این قاعدت احترازیت القیود We have a قید which is mentioned and we say the first assumption is that this قید is mentioned for a reason it's not just لحو or you know example or emphasis the first the primary assumption of اقلا is احترازیت القیود It means that it wants to exclude some portion. So if he says, bring me cold water, the first assumption is that cold is important. It's to say that I don't want water which is warm or hot. Yeah, this is the first assumption. You never say, uh, as a common sense person, that this is... Better or this is example, but you can bring any water. No, when your master says bring the cold water, you assume that everything that he says is important. It must be cold. <coughs> yes, or you cannot say I bring cold, but something other than water. No, everything is meant. So, the laalat tasdiqi means what is meant by him seriously is what it is said we assume what is said is meant okay so what is the core point in احترازیت القیود is that غید is mentioned we assume it is meant okay in مقدمات الحکمه the core is different in مقدمات الحکمه Qaid is not mentioned. We say so the speaker must have meant mutlaq because if he had not meant mutlaq, he must have mentioned the Qaid. So one is by focusing on the Qaid which is mentioned. One is by focusing on the fact that Qaid is not mentioned. You understand? It's not the same rule. Ihtiraziyyat al is different from قرینت الحکمه قرینت الحکمه is that قید is not mentioned so اطلاق must be meant so دلالت تصدیقیه means that this is seriously meant by the speaker works in this way that we say he has kept it مطلق so he must mean it مطلق but in احترازیت القیود we say he has mentioned a قید And this gate must mean that he wants to exclude. You understand the difference? So this is what he wants to say. Vajoharoha means Joharo Karinat al Hikmah. At Tamasuk Bidalalat and Tastiriya. There is a Dalala Tastiri. We want to say what is meant seriously by the speaker. That delalat tasdiqiyya is for what? Lezuhur an orfiyan siyaqi. It's something that common sense understands from the context. But this context is context of itlaq. And this is different from zuhur, which is understood from the context of qaidatu ihtiraziyat al qud. Because that context is the context of taqyid, when qaid is mentioned. So when he says, bring me water. We can use Qarinatul Hikmah to say any water. When he says bring me cold water, we use Ihtiraziyatul Qiyud and we say it must be cold. You understand? These are two different types of Dilalat uh, Tasdiqi. Fakad Arafna Sabiqan Anna Hadihil Qaidah Qaidatul Ihtiraziyatul Qiyud. Qiyud means Qaidatul Ihtiraziyatul Qiyud. Ta'atamidu. Ala zuhur an orfiyan siyaqi depends on the outward meaning which is understood by orf 
from the context. And that is, أَنَّمَا يَقُولُهُ يُرِيدُهُ حَقِيقَةً Whatever he says, he means it. So he says cold water, he means cold water. وَيُوجَدُ ظُهُورٌ أُرْفِيٌ سِيَاقِيٌ آخر. But we have another zuhur that orf understands from the context. And that is, لا يكون شيء دخيلا وقيدا في مراده الجدي وحكمه ولا يبين بالله. The other Dalalat Orfi is that there is nothing that he wants unless he mentions. <coughs> if he doesn't mention, if he doesn't explain it, he doesn't want it. He, he cannot say, I wanted, but I didn't say it. I was shy, for example. If you were shy, then you should not expect from us. Yeah? If in Orf, if your manager, your boss asks you something, and he doesn't mention some details, and later he says, why you don't bring me those details? You say, you didn't mention. He says, I was feeling shy. I say, okay. What is my fault? So this is or Uqala speak like this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wiser than Uqala. Yeah, he's khaliqul aql. So it's impossible that he would have lower standards. لأن الظاهر حال المتكلم أنه في مقام بيان تمام مراده الجدي بخطابه. Because what is apparent condition of the speaker is that he wants to say whatever he needs, whatever he wants, whatever he means, he should say. وهيث إن الغيد ليس مبينا في حالة عدم النسب قرينة على التقييد. And since this modifier, this detail is not explained, is not expressed, when he doesn't say cold water, he just says water, he just says raqaba, he has not mentioned the gate. فَهُوَ إِذَنْ لَيْسَ دَاخِلًا فِي الْمُرَادِ الْجَدِّ وَالْحُكْمِ الصَّابِرِ So it must not be part of what he means seriously. It must not be part of the hook which is fixed. وَهَذَا هُوَ الْإِطْلَاقُ الْمَتُوبُ And this is what we want from إطلاق. We don't want إطلاق to be expressed clearly by lafs. For us it is enough to understand the meaning of a speaker. وَهَكَذَا نُلَاحِظْ أَنَّ كُلًّا مِنْ قَرِينَةِ الْحِكْمَةِ الَّتِي تُثْبِتُ الْإِطْلَاقِ وَقَائِدَةَ اَحْتِرَازِيَّةِ الْقُيُودِ Both of these, قَرِينَةُ الْحِكْمَةِ, which indicates اطلاع, and قَائِدَةُ اَحْتِرَازِيَّةِ الْقُيُودِ Both of them تَبْتَنِي عَلَى ظُهُورٍ عُرْفِيًّ سِيَاغِيًّ حَالِيًّ غَيْرَ الظُّهُورِ الْعُرْفِيَّ السِّيَاغِيَّ الْحَالِيَّ الَّذِي تَعْتَمِدُ عَلَيْهِ الْأُخْرَى Each of them depends on an apparent meaning which Orf understands from context. But these are two different things. One is the context when Gaid is mentioned. One is the context where Gaid is not mentioned. So if he says, bring me cold water, we say, ma'anaya zahiri for this, for orf is, cold is important. Cold is a condition. If he says, bring me water, he doesn't say any Gaid. We say, ma'an al-orfi. For this context is that it didn't have to be cold or hot. It's general. فالقاعدتو means قاعدتو احترازية القيود تبتني على ظهور حال المتكلم في أن ما يقوله يريده قاعدتو احتراز means that when he says bring me cold water he has said cold so he means cold. You say something, so we assume that you mean it. But in Karinatul Ikman, you have not said something, and we assume that you didn't mean Ghayd. It's clear, yeah? Wa Karinatul Ikman, Tabtani Allah, Zuhur Halim, Kalem, Fi Anna Kulama Yakuno Ghaydan, Fi Muradil Jadi, Yakulu, Fil Kalam, El Ladi Sadra, Men, Le Ebraz, Zalikal Murad Jadi. Whatever he wants in his serious meaning. He must mention it because he's from Maghame Bayan and he has to 
mention everything that he wants. If he has not mentioned it, means he didn't want it. Okay. Now, there is an objection that, inshallah, we will study in the next session. So, it takes about one and a half pages of the book. So, maybe we'll leave it for, inshallah, another time. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين